Hey everybody, this is Video Bob, and for my regular subscribers to my YouTube channel, please skip this video. This is not for you. Okay, for those of you out there who have searched for this particular item, I'm going to explain in detail why you need it. Now, I've been doing DVD, CD duplication, VHS duplication, for a very long time. Uh, since the mid-90s, I started off doing VHS duplication, moved into doing disc duplication. First Yamaha burner I had back in like 96 probably was a $4,000 unit. And the blank CDs were like 40 bucks. So I've been doing this a long time. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I've used a lot of different disc publication machines. Now, uh, you know, I've used the microboards units, the DX series, you know, where you had a dropped a little disc on a little rubber belt and it would go into an HP print engine and the problem with those is you had to buy the ink from microboards because they would put a little magnetic barcode on each um, you know ink and a reader would verify it so you couldn't just go get ink well now you can't get the ink from microboards anymore and I, I have a friend with a disc duplication business and all of his uh, DX series uh, microboards and machines are now completely useless because you can't get the ink for them anymore. You can't get parts for them and you can't use them. Uh, so I've used those and the Primeras and all these different other units. The last one I was using was called the Pandora Auto Printer, which was basically like uh, a DX series microboards. But what it did was it used a regular Epson Artisan 50. It would drop a disc down a chute and then it would basically simulate your hand putting in a CD tray putting the CD in and, and print. And it worked pretty good. I mean, I printed a few thousand discs on it, uh, but you would have a lot of failure with it. And there was just a lot of weird interfacing because you had two USBs, one operating the printer, one operating the robot, and they had to communicate with each other and sometimes it didn't work. So you had to babysit it. And if you've ever been in disc publishing, if you're somebody who is already doing this and looking for another solution, or if you've never done it before, let me tell you, almost every single robot I've ever owned, you had to babysit that thing all the time. And there was a lot of failures and it would jam and you were constantly having to mess with it. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and bought this thing. So Epson finally figured out that all these people are trying to build robots and contraptions to operate with their printers. Because let's face it, Epson kind of invented the CD printing technology. You know, they were the ones that, ha that first came out with a little tray that you could put right into any consumer printer and print a CD right on their unit. And it works great. You just needed to find a way to automate it. And that's what they did with this unit. Now, there's a couple of different versions of this thing. This, this is one of the latest ones that's out right now. This one's the PP52. And the 50... Uh, just mentions that it can hold 50 discs, right? And uh, we're going to talk about real quickly the difference between the printer and the publisher. The printer unit can hold, I think, 100 discs, and it only prints. Now, this thing prints really fast, and it sips ink. I've done about 1,000 discs, which the discs I'm making um, for a client right now, you know, there's not a whole lot of print. You know, you got a little color here, some black, and a little color here and it has used the exact equal amount of ink. And, you know, checking the thing, it's just barely budged. I mean, it hasn't really moved. I've done a, a thousand of these so far, and it still says that I can print a thousand discs. So the cartridges that this thing takes are, are, are pretty decent size. Now you're gonna spend anywhere from $25 for a fake cartridge to $50 for a genuine cartridge. And basically, this is the size of, the, of each of the cartridges that just snap uh, in here. And um, I, the, the machine's running right now. It's duplicating right now. It's actually burning. So I don't really want to uh, open that door. But, but basically, these just pop right in there. And you can change them individually. You don't have to change all of them at the same time. However, the way this thing works, like a lot of printers, it basically uses all of the colors to, to create a black or whatever. And so it seems to be using all of the colors equally, um, which is fine with me because as long as I get, the, I'll probably get two, 3,000 prints out of uh, uh, these cartridges because uh, I'm not using very much ink on there. I mean, so unless you're doing a full color print, if you get some a-hole client that wants the whole background of the disc black, well, you're going to use a lot of ink, okay? So if you're just doing some simple printing over white, it, this thing sips it. 
Now you can see what it's doing here, and we'll show a close-up of that. You put your blank discs up here, it little arm grabs it, puts it in the CD burner, burns the image, then uh, when that's done, it pops out, arm grabs it, puts it into the printer tray. So what's different about this than all the other robots is that they, they literally have put a CD drawer that the disc goes in and it, it goes in, the thing prints it, it comes out, takes it out, puts it in the little tray. Now there's a third little receptacle there that holds 25 discs. Now, if you're doing low production mode, you can use that as your uh, output, or um, that's also used for as a rejection tray when you're doing high volume output, which means it's taking 50 from here and dropping 50 there. Now, if all you're doing is printing on this thing, it prints in about like a minute or less. It prints really fast. Um, so the way I always did things in the past was I had a tower, I had two towers actually, that I would burn on, and I would burn like, I think each tower held seven discs. So I, I could reproduce seven discs at a time pretty quickly, and then I would put them in the printer and the printer would print separately. If you need to do high volume production, that's what you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna get just the printer version of this and then stick with a tower, but you're gonna have to manually do that. You know, you're gonna have to take the disc out keep and do that by hand. I decided to go with the automated printer one because, you know, I'm not doing high volume and the clients that I have, they get a couple of hundred discs a month. So I can just have this thing running. Now, at the current speed that I have this thing running, running at maximum burn speed on a DVD that's a full DVD, doing a full verification of each disc and then printing it, it's taking about nine to 10 minutes per disc which means in order to print a thousand of these, it's gonna take a full seven days running at 24 hours a day. So that's kind of slow, but depending on what you're doing and depending on what the project is, that might be fine for you. So for me, I only need to produce about 100 to 200 discs a month. So for me, uh, that works fine. And here's the deal. This is the only unit I've ever had that is 100% flawless. I have taken this thing out of the box a couple days ago. It's been running now uh, since, you know, for, for about three days straight, and I haven't had a single failure. Not one misprint, not one misburn, not one single failure. It has worked absolutely flawlessly, and I'm using pretty cheap, you know, DVDs. These things are, you know, they're, they're I forget the brand of them or whatever, but they're decent quality, but they're not like microboards or, or anything. I'm not using the actual Epson ones. Now, you can buy an Epson CD or DVD for these that have a special waterproof glossy surface where you can print photo quality that's waterproof, UV resistant, if you want to spend the extra money on that, if you, if you need to print something like really spectacular. But these are just a regular matte finish DVD, and every single one of them I've tested has come out perfectly fine. And I, what I do is I have a couple of different DVD players, really cheap ones, a Panasonic, a Sony, and I'll try them in different ones just to see if there's any incompatibility, issue, incompatibility issues. Haven't had any yet. Um, the software, let's talk about the software, the ease of use. First of all, you got one USB cable on this thing. Comes with cables, comes with everything that you need. Uh, it does not come with any ink, I don't believe. I don't think there was any ink in the box. I had to buy the ink separately. Uh, and that all depends on the package that you buy and depending on where you get it. I think I spent 2500 bucks on this machine, the PP52. And then I bought a couple of packs of ink. So uh, let's just say I've got $3,000 in shipping tax, two sets of ink, the unit, and everything. It's a lot of money. So you, you need to be able to commit to spending that much money. If you can't spend that much money on the unit and you're not gonna make enough money with it, then this isn't gonna do you any good. But let me tell you, this system has been around for almost 10 years now and I would do anything if I could go back in time and have bought this thing. It is completely automated and works flawlessly and the software is just regular Epson Easy CD print. That's the other great thing about it, and I'm gonna talk about something in here in just a second that's gonna blow your mind. But it uses regular Epson CD print. Now, if you've never used Epson CD print, it just couldn't be easier. It's a really simple program. It's, you can either build your, your, your image 
you know, in the soft, you, you put like text on it, put a picture on it, whatever you want. But what I do is I build my photo perfectly square in Photoshop and import it as an image. You just select image, you draw it, you size it. And it took, I, I swear it didn't take me 15 seconds to import the image and make it uh, a, a saved file. Now, one weird thing I will say is for burning purposes. Now, this will burn a CD, DVD, or a Blu-ray. It doesn't use ISO images, which is weird. I mean, for 20 years, I've been using Nero to make my ISO images. And I have all of my different things as ISO images. This thing, what it wants you to do is you put your regular DVD in or CD, and then you drag and drop the folder, or you just transfer the files to a folder. It wants the raw files in a folder. Then when you go to publish, when you're choosing the disk you want to burn, you choose the folder and it just takes the files out of that and that's what it, it uses. I mean, you could use an actual disk in a ROM if you wanted to and source from that, but that would slow you down. I transferred it over to the desktop, kept my folder there. So, so for the burning, you select your, your files that are gonna go on the disk and then for your printing, you choose the file for the printing and then you just tell it publish and how many you want. So, um, like I said, it's taken 10 minutes per disk to, to make these. And uh, if you, here's the other thing, if you open the door, it will pause whatever's happening and you, you can add more blanks and take out the printed ones. And then as soon as you close the door, it automatically resumes. And then the little arm will come and it will check to see how many is in there. It's pretty cool how it does it. And it just keeps going. So um, you don't have to do anything. You could have uh, uh, a person who's in charge of refilling the thing. And when it runs out, it pauses. You fill it up again. You take the printed ones out and it just keeps going. So for instance, I told it to print a thousand units. And, you know, it. I come in every... Um, you know, five or six hours or whatever, and I fill up the blanks and take the printed ones out and, you know, shrink wrap them, put them in a box. So it, it has just been the greatest investment ever. I would do anything in the world if I'd have had this for the last 20 years because basically it's totally effortless. The only thing you have to do is just keep putting more blanks in and take the printed ones out. The only thing that would make it better is if it could like put them in a chute, you could just, you know, put 10,000 of them in a bucket. But other than that, this is the greatest thing ever. So if you're going to do high volume printing, get the printer version only from Epson and keep burning on the towers and do it by hand manually. Or here's the other thing. You can stack these things up. You can stack up as many of them as you want and daisy chain them. These things are even designed that you can rack mount them if you want. Um, the way it's designed, like I've got the laptop just sitting up on top. Now, let's talk about the computer. Here's the other thing. You can use a Macintosh computer with this thing. This is the only disk publishing system that I've seen that will run on a Mac. Now, this one has a dedicated, this Dell laptop is a brand new laptop that's dedicated just for printing on this thing. That's all I use it for, okay? Because I got that laptop for like 200 bucks, right? And that's all it does. But I have complained for years, because I'm a Mac guy, that they don't make any publishing system that runs on a Mac. And so if you, most people do video editing and things like that, they use Macs. You can run this thing on a Mac. Isn't that great? And there it goes. It's doing, it's, it's a uh, little tray opens up. I wish I could open the door and show you, but. There it is, placing the, the disc into the printer, and it's going to print it. And it prints it in a few seconds, and then it, the alarm grabs it, drops it into the chute. This thing has been running 24 hours a day for the last three days or whatever. I've got a box of discs already printed. Fantastic machine. Can't recommend it enough. Now, let's talk about the cons. What are the cons? The con is it's expensive. Cost, uh, you know, you're going to spend... $3,000 on the thing. Um, the other con is that it has a life cycle of 30 to 35,000 discs. At uh, 30,000 discs, you have to mail this thing back to Epson for refurbishment because they have to replace the ink pads 
uh, and heads and things. And I, I don't know what the cost of that is. It's a few hundred bucks and it probably takes a few weeks, if, if not, I don't know how long. But 30,000 prints is a lot, okay? So I've done the math on that. And if you look at the cost of ownership, uh, you know, that's something like seven cents a disc. So you need to build that into your cost, the cost of ownership. You figure by the time you, the, the physical CD is gonna cost you somewhere in the 20 cents range, then however much ink, it's hard to determine. So you need to figure out that you're spending somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 cents per disc, uh, depending on how big of a print you're doing with the cost of ownership of this thing. And that's what it's gonna cost you. So how much are you charging for duplication? Well, the discs that I do, believe it or not, the clients who buy these in low production from me are paying as much as $3 a print, which you know, in, in the industry is high, but for low volume custom stuff, where I hand deliver it to you, that's what I'm charging. So uh, if you're in the wedding industry, for instance, and you just need to make 10 or 20 you know, things, I mean, maybe you can just do that on your computer. But if you need to do a couple of hundred a month or, or even a, you know, what this thing is capable of doing, uh, if you're doing a burn, verify, and print, like I said, that's 10 minutes a piece. So it takes one week to do a thousand, which means you could do about, you know, 4,000 CDs a month on one machine if you were doing that. That all depends on the length of the burn, uh, the length of the print, that's, that's, that's all variable. So between three to 4,000, and that's running at 24 hours a day if somebody's filling it up all the time. I think, um, I think it goes through a spindle every, what, six or eight hours. It just, like I said, it depends on the burn. Um, so that's something that you got to calculate. If you wanted to start a duplication business, I, this is what I would use. I would just buy a stack of these. I'd buy like, you know, 10 of these or whatever you had to do and just have them running all the time. So I, I don't know what else I can say about the thing other than I looked and I couldn't find any videos about this thing at all, uh, except for like, you know, one foreign guy in some language, I don't know what it was, and, and they just really don't show you how it works. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time telling you about the software because it's, it's just a simple Epson CD print. It could not be easier. If you can't operate it, then this is not for you. It is so easy. But let me tell you, there was like z almost no setup. A simple, basic Windows executable printer driver for an Epson printer. If you were using a Mac, it would be even less than that. Um, and it just does everything. I mean, there's just no maintenance. There's no anything. It does have a button here that you hold for three seconds should you ever, you know, for a head cleaning thing. But you can also do that in the software, and you, you've probably done that before. But after a 1,000 prints, I mean, these are coming out uh, perfectly. You know, this is, this is for a client, and... Um, you know, basically like, you know, just, just showing you, um, you know, this is a really simple print. This is a guy that makes, uh, you know, he has a food service uh, manufacturing where he has a machine that makes tamales, right? So this is the instructional video on how to operate the machine. And he gets a couple of hundred of these from me um, a month uh, to ship out with the machines. So, you know, he's been buying these duplications from me for over 20 years. And it's also a video that I produced. So if you're in the, the video industry where you're making corporate videos, you're making instructionals and things, this thing, what's also great about this thing is if you wanted to, you could actually have CDs here and DVDs here and have them output there. And you could go in and just burn one-offs. So if you were doing some type of situation where you're doing burning one-offs, uh, and had this thing set up with your series of printers, you could just go in and select and, and it would be super duper easy. You know, if you were doing some sort of a kiosk kind of system where you were uh, making videos or CDs, uh, there's still a lot of musicians out there, particularly uh, like rappers. Rappers like CDs because they, you have these guys who want to give them out as demos, right? And so, um, because my buddy who runs a, a CD DVD duplication and also sells the discs, that's what kept him in business for so many years. Churches and uh, rap star artists, they would come in and have 
you know, like 500 CDs burned and printed. And they would just get a really simple, you know, thing on their, uh, just some text on there, some contact information. And then they would give these CDs out because, you know, it's only costing them like 50 cents or whatever to, to give them out. And they would use those as promotion. So uh, if that's what you're doing, you, you couldn't ask for a better thing than this. And like I said, if, well, if I didn't have it on DVD verification, it would probably take a whole lot less time. So if you don't know how that works is it burns the disc and then it verifies byte for byte the entire disc and should anything have not been 100% copied, it would eject it into this other uh, chute. And I have not, in a, in a thousand burns, I haven't had one single one fail. So I've almost thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do the verification. But I don't want to take that chance. I don't want to have my client get the disc and uh, maybe it doesn't play for some reason or that, you know, maybe it was a faulty disc. So to me, it's worth the extra time because I'm not in a hurry. So I'll let this thing burn for a solid week. It's quiet, doesn't make any noise, doesn't bother anybody. And I come in twice a day, whatever, like uh, in the morning I fill it up and then at night I fill it up and I change them out. So can't recommend it enough. I'm sorry that this video went too long, but when you're talking about making a $3,000 or more investment in one of these machines, I really thought that this video would help uh, somebody out there who was looking for these. Um, and I hope that uh, I helped you. I, I suppose I could open this while it's running. Uh, that Yeah, I didn't like that at all. But this is where you keep your inks in there and they just pop right out. And if you open the, the door while it's in process, it'll just pause the operation. And then it has these little trays and you just fill these up with your blank disc. They just pop out and they set in there. And then here's our, our current booty. Here's our, our loot. And then there's the ones that have been printed. And then when you close the door, what's gonna happen is the arm is gonna come and check and it'll check to see how many are in here and it'll check to see how many are in there and it'll check to see if there's any over there. There, see it's checking them all. And it it knows. And it so it, now it knows what what it available here and what space is available here and it'll reflect that up there. Brilliant, brilliant system. Can't recommend it enough. The Epson disc producer is the best that money can buy. Hey, uh, if you came here to watch this video just to see this thing, um, no point in, there's no point in subscribing. Uh, my subscribers follow me because I do videos about custom cars and all that other stuff. So, yay, yeah, hey, if you're into custom cars, luxury cars, movie props, and that kind of stuff, uh, you may want to check out my other videos. But this was sort of a one-off video that I felt was sort of a public service announcement for the other guys out there, uh, or other guys and gals, rather, who uh, do uh, disc publishing, and I just wanted to help you out. I'm getting nothing out of this. However, I will post a link to where you can buy these just to help you out, make sure you get the right one. And, um, you know, thanks so much for hanging in and watching this long video. Hey, video, Bob. Thanks.